This is MATD1534, unit 14, our last unit in the scores. So it's a happy ending for us this morning that we could, could actually finish off all the units and at least have online lessons uh, on all of these. So thank you for all of you that have joined. But we're going to now just consider unit 14 here. Uh, which is uh, the translation. Now, let me just state this now from the start, that what you must understand here, because this is important, because I don't want you to lose any unnecessary marks. When we sketch graphs, we can, of course, sketch it on any way we like. Okay? Meaning you, you can use, when we did functions, we also did graphs. We worked out turning points, x-intercepts, y-intercepts, etc. Um, this unit is sketching the graphs by using translations or by using the method of translating the graphs. Now, when we ask these questions in a test or in an exam, please just read carefully what the question tells you to do. Because if the question says, sketch the graph, well, then you use all your knowledge you have. So then you can use your knowledge of translation that we're going to do this morning and of the previous work that we have done. And you can draw the sketch because then uh, you, you, can, you can do it as you please. But when, this, when the question says, and in this unit it is going to say now, because, because we are now doing this unit. So it will say, sketch the graph by making use of the method of translation. Please, then you need to answer that question. So then you need to sketch the graphs by doing what we're now going to do. So you can't then just do the graph. You will, you will get a mark or so for your, for your answer then, but you will lose all the other marks because the method you used, you did not, you know, was wrong because you didn't answer actually the question. So please just be careful about that. So when we say by translation, then use translation. I think it's the easiest way to draw any graph in any case. So when you have translation in mind, it really helps you to see the picture in your mind actually of the final result. And then you can apply all the other uh, characteristics also. So after you've done your translation, you can still go and work out the x-intercepts, work out the y-intercepts, etc, etc. But this is very, very easy for us to draw more complicated graphs. So, okay, let's just discuss the basics and then we do a few examples and then you'll, you'll see how easy it, it is actually. So, first of all, the pre-knowledge again. So, vertical translate, this is all pre-knowledge, this is a very easy unit, so there's not really lots of more things to learn here. So, it's all like pre-knowledge. Okay, so vertical translations, we know if we have the mother graph of x squared, okay, I don't know if you can see clearly on the stream here, but in your books you will be able to see, but this is the little red graph here. That is the, the x squared graph, we know it very well. That is the mother graph. Remember now we talk about the mother graphs here, okay? And then if we have a plus 2 there, we know now that that means lift the graph by 2. So that is a vertical translation. So what we have here at the end, the P, the Q sometimes, because some we, we it's A X squared plus Q, and normally for the the, the the functions, the defined function or the formula for it, or uh, equation for it in, in general form, um, that plus Q there will then actually show us the vertical translation. Okay, so if it's minus 2, the graph will just move down to. Okay, then we did also discuss a lot of times horizontal translation. Now, horizontal translation, remember the mother graph is still this x squared. Don't now forget that our mother graph is still just the x squared here, the little red one there. Okay, so now if we do horizontal, in brackets, we will find the change now. So that was just x. And now it becomes x plus 2 squared. So the x is now x plus 2 squared. It's nothing to do with what is in the front here, the coefficient. And it's nothing to do with what is in the end here, the q value. That's not involved here. 
It's just the x becomes x plus 2 now. So the power was x squared. Now it's x plus 2 squared. And then we know also from pre-knowledge that if it's a plus here, we go against the sign. So if it's plus 2, the graph will move in a horizontal way. You know, it's a horizontal translation, but it will go to negative 2 units. So the turning point here will actually move from 0, 0 to minus 2, 0. Remember, it's always the brackets equal to 0 that will give us the turning point, as we've discussed earlier. So when we did the function, so it will be minus 2. And the same thing here, if it's minus 2 there, it will move to the right then. So the turning point here will be 2, 0. Okay, so that is the horizontal translation. Then we actually also did symmetry. And, uh, but the one we, we use most here is then the reflection in the x-axis. Again, this is our mother graph. Now remember, when we reflect a graph in the x-axis, we have negative the original equation. Okay, so if we have x squared here, we will now have negative x squared. So reflection in the x-axis always give us the negative of the previous function. Alright, so this is the three uh, main things we use here. Yeah, it's just like a summary to just explain again. So if we have a constant at the back here, that is then a vertical uh, translation. So it's upwards, downwards. And then if we have in brackets, plus it's a negative horizontal, go to the left. If we have minus here, x minus here, we go to the right, horizontal. And then when we have a negative of the original, we actually have reflection through the x-axis. All right. So that just shows what we just discussed there. Uh, there was the vertical translations. There's the horizontal translations. And there's the reflection. Okay, so when we then look at, say, x squared plus 1, what we do now when we use translation, you must understand. And in the book, I've done some of the questions on one system of axes. We don't want you to do it like that. So you're always going to have three steps here. You must understand this now. But I will show it when I do the examples later on. But uh, I want you to think about this already. That's why I mention it here. So we will start with the mother graph. And then you do your, that's on one graph like here. Then you do your horizontal translation or your vertical translation. You can decide. And that then you draw a second graph separately. And then you do your vertical translation on a third graph separately. Do not do them on one system of axes. You do them separately. And you will tell what you are doing. So we, when you mark it, we want you to say to us, this is the mother graph. And then you draw it. Then we want you to say to us, we could, this is a horizontal translation now, I'm, and then you draw it. And then you tell us, this is the vertical translation now, and then you do it. So we want to see what are you doing, and then your result. So after three sketches, you should be then done. Remember now, the mother graph, we will all have the same, but some of us can maybe start here with vertical as our second step, and some might do yeah, horizontal. So that doesn't matter. Okay, so if we look at x squared plus 1, um, now, when I say three things here, it means then, uh, you must also just understand this now, then it means that they, in our graph that we must sketch, both happened. I mean, yeah, it's only vertical. Then, of course, you're just going to have two sketches. You're not going to have three then, okay? So, um, it depends on the question. Here we just have horizontal, so then we're just going to have two graphs. But if we have an equation here with both things happening, so in other words, there was a vertical shift and there was a horizontal shift, then we will have the three graphs. Okay, so in this case, we just have plus one, so we will show our mother graph. Remember, you must show the mother graph. We will tell that there is a vertical translation of one, 
or 2 or whatever the case is and we will show that we move it up or in B we move it down or in C we move it to the left or in D we move it to the right okay so that is important but that you can go through in um, the book yeah we will start with the mother graph of x squared and then we can move it one to the left and one down one to the left one down but we're going to show it in three sketches yeah i just uh, talk about the, the the different shiftings that is taking place so it's not how we're going to do it probably we will get to that now now the other thing i just quickly want to discuss so when we have 2x squared or a coefficient here okay so actually the mother graph was x squared and then we talked about the effect of 2 and we said when we did this in previous units remember all this is pre-knowledge now as i've said when we did this in pre uh, pre units we said the 2 is the stretching factor and the half here is the shrinking factor so shrink the graph I, said, I told you if you take the two arms and you stretch them up, your arms get closer to your ears. Or if you take your two arms and you press them downwards, you're shrinking them, then it goes away from your ears, your arms. Okay, so now when we consider this, we must now discuss and decide what will we then take as the mother graph. We will take x squared as the mother graph or are we allowed to take the 2x squared as the mother graph? Okay, so in our course, we are allowed to take the 2x squared as the mother graph. So that's why we will still end up with three graphs only. But say now some of you start with x squared like here in the example, and you do 2x squared, well, then you're going to have four graphs in the end, because you will have x squared as your mother graph, and then you will have 2x squared as the one that was now stretched, and then you will do your vertical and your result horizontal movements ending up with four graphs but um, you really do not have to do that you can start with 2x squared and just do the three so let us just look at this example four now okay all right so once again there we have minus 2x minus 3 squared plus 4 so once again this is not the full thing we want I'm just showing you uh, what is happening here so when we do it by translation, we must do it step by step. We must have those three or four graphs. But remember, for our course, three is fine. So what I'm trying to show here is that we can take the mother graph as minus 2x squared. So we must realize if we have the minus 2 there as the coefficient, we then actually have minus 2x squared as our mother graph. And then this graph will then, after that, shift 3 to the right horizontally and it will shift 4 units up okay ending up then with 3 to the right and 4 up from where we are that's the 4 there okay remember to show all turning points all beginning points all that stuff that we've talked so so uh, many times about in this course if um You've done your translations like here. Um, remember, we're just considering the translation now. So if the question did not ask you for x-intercepts and so on and y-intercept and so on, then you do not need to, to work it out. It's only if the question asks you to also do that. So you're just going to show the translation. But remember, all beginning values, all end values, two, two coordinates per piece, that is still valid. Okay, because we need to see where your graph is going to go through. But we will do full example in a couple of minutes. All right, so yeah, um, very important now. What now if I have to sketch this graph now by the method of translation, you see? Remember now, if this was just sketch the graph in previous units or without the question saying translation, we can find the turning point, x-intercepts, y-intercepts, the stuff that we did earlier but we're going to now have to do this by translation so therefore we will need to do the completion of the square completing the square so that we can see what translations are taking place so once again 
you can now see how important the completing of the square is because that is how we actually can see what the translations are. So that graph will be translated uh, and we will use mother graph x squared because there's just a one in front. So it's actually our x squared graph that moves one to the right and two up. Okay, so remember then when the graph, the function actually, is given, the notation is given in the ax squared plus bx plus c manner, we need to do completing of the square, completion of the square, to find the shifts that's taking place. Okay, so that is actually all the pre knowledge uh, up till there. So let us look now at this example. Okay, and we do a full example. Listen, you can make this NB. Okay, you can make this an NB. Right. Okay, so this is the third, the third graph. So first of all, let us define our mother graph. So our mother graph will just be the square root of X. Okay, that will just be the square root of X. So that is always going to be our first step defining the mother graph and then draw it so remember now we've done domain we've done range we've done everything so we know x must be greater and equal to zero here we know there's a positive in front of the square root so therefore the graph can only go up okay so we can just get ourselves uh, ourselves a second coordinate uh, remember now zero will give zero so we'll start here with zero zero and oh, you can any other coordinate. Let's put in one there. One gives one. So put the coordinate in, and this is one one. Remember, this is done done by software. So the coordinate is not indicated here, but you must indicate two points, as I've said so many times. Okay, so you can indicate that point, and you can indicate this point. Now, what is important now, when you do your translation? Those points that you've chosen there, show how they change. Don't use other points now. So choose two points. I just want to make this a bit bigger here. So choose your two points and show how they are moving throughout. And remember what I said earlier. I've done it here on one set of axes, but you must do them separately. Okay. So we can now say... Um, let's do the horizontal translation first. So if I look there, I can see, okay, this graph, this mother graph must move two places to the right because this is now X minus two. So I'm going to write for, if I do it properly, I'm going to say, listen, there's a horizontal translation two to the right. So that I'm going to show. Remember, I said you must tell us what you are going to do. And now I'm going to take this graph and move it to, to the right. So let me indicate this in green here. So that was now, remember, that was 0, 0. So I'm going to show how that point is going to move. Well, it moves 2 to the right, so it's going to be here now. So that is going to be 2, 0. And the other point was 1, 1. It moves 2 to the right, so it's going to now be 3, 1. 3, 1. So that's going to give me my marks for my horizontal translation. Now, remember, I do it separately. So now I go to the third, and then I should be finished after 3. Ne? So now I go to the third. Let me take the orange maybe here. So now I say, okay. What happens now? Well, there is a plus one. There's a plus one. So that is a vertical translation of one. So, come right to them here. Listen, there will be a vertical translation one up. Because it's plus. Go to your graph now. And use the points and show what happens. Okay, so this 2, 0 goes 2 up. So it becomes the point 2, 1. This 3, 1 goes 1 up. It becomes the point 4, 1. 
Okay, and then the last thing you do, just draw it now and pack yourself on your backs and say, well done. Because then you will be done and you will get all your marks. So this is how we sketch the grass by the method of translation.